Hello, my friends. My name is Dakoba, and welcome to the first episode of World Shaping, a Minecraft guide and Let's Play tutorial series. We're going to start out by creating a new world here. We're going to call this Terra Nova, which is, it means new world. Terra Nova. But we're going to go in with all of our default options just set and no seed for our world generator, and we will see what uh, the rng gods have dealt us in terms of this new world now this series is going to be about going on adventures about building a new world and we're going to start out by getting started look at this we've got we appear to be near a desert to start and a swamp or a, a savanna rather and a root forest oh this is excellent we've got some sheep nearby this is wonderful uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started by creating some very basic tools and we're going to chop down some of these trees uh, to gather some basic wood and then we may uh, we may have to gather some wool from these sheep in order to get started as well now we've got three wood that should be enough to create some very basic materials we're gonna go ahead and create a couple of sticks and we're gonna create a crafting table and with that crafting table we can uh, get started let's head up to the top of this little hill here and see if we can't get a slightly better view of our surroundings see if there's a maybe a better place to get started than right at this little desert crossroads here uh, looks like this little plateau may actually be an excellent place for us um, and we, we even have a cave here how wonderful all right this is where we will start off this is very exciting so we'll go ahead and drop down uh, that was that was not our crafting table that was a that was a piece of wood. Let's go ahead and pick that back up. Uh, turn that into slabs to start. And let's drop our crafting table on the ground. Drop our crafting table and make a wooden pickaxe. Now, if there are no... If there's no easily accessible stone, then you probably want to make more wooden tools than just a pickaxe. You want to make a sword or an axe uh, and use those to gather extra wood uh, to defend yourself, things like that. Since we started right next to this little cave, which uh, uh, is nice and full of stone oh and it looks like there's uh some monsters down there some zombies it looks like so we'll uh we'll sort of keep our distance we don't want to tangle with them just yet uh, but we'll gather up some of the stone that's down here and we'll use that stone to then make some of our more advanced tools so we'll go ahead and break down this wall just a little bit we hear those footsteps that zombie might be approaching us so we'll we'll retreat with our new stone, head back up over to our crafting table and build some stone tools. So we're going to uh, turn some more of our planks into sticks and use our stone tools to make a ax, make a pickax, make a shovel. And I think we are gonna need some more sticks still. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we will make a sword as well. Now, I like to put my sword on one, my axe on two, my pickaxe on three. We'll make some torches here soon and place those on four. I like having all of my items in the same slots uh, as we go. Now, each of the tools we made are useful for different things. Axes are for chopping wood. Uh, shovels are for digging through dirt or other soft blocks. And pickaxes are used for mining. So with a stone pick, you can see we're able to break these uh, oak blocks much, much faster. This, uh, These large trees are dark oak trees, which are uh, very good for giving us lots and lots of wood. We should have no shortage of wood being right next to a root forest with lots of these dark oak trees. Um, unfortunately, they, uh, they're they often quite hard to get all of the wood out of the upper branches uh, because they can grow reasonably tall and because they're thick and they grow in such sort of dense clusters uh, they they tend to grow in ways like you see here where they're they're sort of connected to one another uh, which again gives us lots of wood but makes it difficult to clear land and difficult to get things there are lots and lots of animals around we will we will take advantage of those uh, soon we are gonna need some food and I think this chicken will be our first meal. Thank you for your sacrifice, Mr. Chicken. Uh, you will be remembered. All right, let's gather up a little bit of these red flowers as well. Those will provide us with some red dye so we can a little later do some useful stuff with that. Uh, and then we have a whole bunch of sheep around. Now, we're gonna wanna capture and, and sort of raise some of these sheep, but in the very short term, we very desperately need a bed. 
Uh, and so we're gonna go ahead and gather some pork chops from these sheep, or some lamb chops from these sheep, rather, some mutton, and hopefully we'll get the three wool that we need. Unfortunately, we only got two, which means we're gonna have to go for another sheep. That is unfortunate, but that is the way Minecraft works. We rely on animals to give us what we need, and and that is that is how things are done. So now we have some mutton, some chicken, and some wool, and we can use that to sort of establish a safe shelter for our first night. Now we're planning to spend quite a lot of time underground during this series, uh, going through the caves, finding monsters, and finding cool resources, but because we were able to get that wool, we can start off above ground and be fairly safe in doing it. We're gonna go ahead and take our dark wood and turn it into a bunch of planks. That will help us out. That'll give us a whole bunch that we can use to craft a basic shelter. Uh, since we have a bed and we can craft a bed immediately, we'll go ahead and do that. And then we're actually gonna take our dye and turn that into red dye, or our flower and turn that into red dye, and then use that to make a red bed. And red beds are useful because they will allow us to sleep through the night. So we'll go ahead and place that down. Now we're gonna take some of these dark oak planks and we're gonna build a basic shelter. Now the shelter doesn't need to be much. Uh, really what we want is something that will let us stay out of line of sight of any monsters that do manage to spawn. So we're gonna go ahead and build this up and I'm just kind of placing these walls haphazardly. That's one of the one of the ways that I like to build my shelters is to be a little more uh, organic in how they're shaped. And especially with these early ones, we'll go ahead and just do these in sort of a crude, crude circle here. Then come back on in here. And all the way over here. So we want we will want a doorway. So that'll be our, our doorway right there. There we go. And we can fill in these walls. We want to make these walls about three three blocks high, maybe maybe four blocks high, but three is a, a nice uh easy one that doesn't use too many materials and makes the the uh, the room not feel small and, and packed in and claustrophobic and so we'll we'll build our shelter three blocks high now right now we're building these out of just very crude wooden slabs we'll come back through and clean this up here in a later later episode of wool and shaping uh, but right now we are more interested in just getting uh, some some sort of safe areas set up for us. Now, one of the things we're going to need as the sun starts to get a little lower in the sky is some coal. And I didn't see any coal in this first cave. There are a couple of other small caves we can go and explore. Let's go ahead and be bold and head down into this cave. We heard and saw some zombies down here earlier. And I bet if we're very, very careful, uh, we can keep them from getting to us. Oh, and that it looks like this cave is actually shaped in such a way that they can't quite reach us anyways. You can see them there, but they can't get to us. And so what we can do is we can actually take advantage of that and hunt these zombies right through the wall. That'll give us our monster hunter advancement. This is wonderful. And then we can come on down in here and just what I was hoping to find, a little bit of coal. Now coal is used for a number of things. We'll use it to cook up the, the meat we gathered earlier. We'll also use it to make some torches. Now it's quite dark and hard to see down here. I happen to be able to see where these uh, these coal blocks are, but uh, normally we wouldn't want to go exploring without some torches. And so we will go ahead and make those right now to start lighting things up a little bit. So we'll light up this cave. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see any iron in this particular cave, so it won't do very much good for that, but we can use it to get that starting coal. And it looks like we did miss some in the darkness there. Mm -hmm would have been much easier to get so that's uh that's a lesson learned is always be always keep an eye out for, for things like that and pay close attention and we're going to want to put a roof on our shack so we'll go ahead and make uh some oak slabs here some dark oak slabs here and use those to construct a simple roof just so that we have a little bit of a shelter and now that we have torches we'll be able to light up the inside of our home looks like we're going to need more slabs than we we built to start this all right, we can always make more. Let's go ahead and make some more slabs. And that is actually burning through our wood supplies very quickly, so we may need to, uh, to go gather some more dark oak there in order to complete the structure. Now these, these survival homes, these, these first homes, are almost always made of either stone or dirt or other very simple light blocks. Uh, 
The fact that we started near a root forest means we're using dark oak instead of regular oak, um, but we're we're essentially building the same same structure that you see everywhere else. We're just doing it uh, with a little bit more, I think, flair and a little bit more style. Uh, and by making it in this sort of interesting shape, it doesn't feel the same as every other home. We can uh, we can also build some steps up to our roof here. Uh, and that will let us come up here and do some cool stuff. Now we can already start to do cool things with this. For example, we could uh, we could go ahead and do a little bit of an overhang here, and then uh, let's extend that out by two. Um, go ahead and take back one of these slabs because I actually want to extend my overhang, and then we might go get some more dark wood and build just a little stylized doorway here with some fence posts. So let's head on over and do that real quick. Now pretty soon we'll want to head underground and get some some iron so that we can start shearing our sheep and uh, doing some more interesting things with some of the materials that we have around. But for now, we're going to stay on the surface until we get a little bit more established, until we have a food source, until we have a little bit of a farm going, and then we will be good. Let's gather up this wood and let's get out of here before night falls. It looks like night is coming and we do not want to be outside when the sun sets because that is when the monsters will come for us. And the reason we had to harvest those sheep and get the bed was so that we could sleep through the night safely. Sleeping through the night will give us another advancement, sweet dreams, and the day and night cycle resets. We can see the sun rising in the east, and we are safe once again. All right, let's take these dark oak logs, turn those into planks, and let's, uh, let's make some fence. So I think for a fence, we're going to need a few sticks. We'll go ahead and make some sticks. And then, yes, we're able to make some dark oak fence posts. Now, these dark oak fence posts, we'll do a lot of things with them. But for now, we are simply going to make a small, small uh, sort of awning for our house and entryway. And we'll do it just like that. And I think that looks nice. I think that's an excellent addition to an otherwise uh, <laughs> kind of bland starter home. Uh, we have a way to get up to our roof in case we want to do anything up here. Uh, and the goal is for us to not have to tear down this house and rebuild it, but instead to be able to modify it and, and sort of extend it as we start to do more interesting things or as we gain better materials to craft with. All right, now that we have our, our house built, we need to get started making some uh, food and figuring out a more p permanent food source. Now, there are lots of animals around uh, that can provide food in the short term. Uh, let's go ahead and we, we only have five cobblestone left. Let's go ahead and mine out a few more cobblestones so we can start cooking the things we've already gathered. You can see our, our hunger gauge has started to deplete just a little bit there. We'll come on down here and we'll gather a little bit more stone and that will let us build a furnace, which will let us smelt our our uh, any ores that we get as well as cook our food so we'll go ahead and gather up just a little bit of coal and a little bit more stone and we can head on up back to our house and we can set up a furnace now to set up a furnace we need to go to our crafting table and we need to make a furnace with by putting eight cobblestone in a square and we set that and we can place that. I'm actually going to place this furnace outside. And this is this is a personal choice of mine and not necessarily the wisest choice, but we can always make more furnaces for inside later. But I like my furnaces to be outside. So we're going to start off by cooking our mutton. And while that mutton cooks, we will start looking at how we could set up a farm. Now, as we've gone, we've uh, broken some of this grass and you can see that it occasionally drops a seed. I think it has a 10% chance to drop a seed. And so we've picked up seven seeds. And those seven seeds are going to be used uh, to grow wheat. Now, wheat can be used as a food source. It can also be used as a uh, means of sort of baiting animals to us. So we're going to craft a hoe. That'll let us create some sort of arable land, some, some soil that we can use to plant things. We're going to come down here, and we want the soil to be level with the surface of the water. And in this case, there's not very much soil that's level with the surface of the water. So we're going to take our shovel, and we're going to clear this out just a little bit out a little bit more land here so that we can start building a farm. Now once we get some iron uh, a little later on we'll be able to uh, build a bucket that will let us sort of transport this water and and build our farm sort of anywhere that we want it to be. But for now since we don't have any iron yet we're going to build this down here. Once we've cleared out the land we're going to go ahead and take our 
hoe and we are going to simply cut into the soil with the right click and that will till the land and make it arable. By doing this near water, the water will slowly uh, irrigate and hydrate the land, which will allow crops to grow much faster, which is why we do it. So we take our wheat seeds, we then plant these in our irrigated and tilled land, and in time, those will grow into wheat, which we can use for food. Now, while we've been doing that, some of our, our mutton has been cooking, so we should be in a good position to uh, do that. It looks like we have a small hole right next to our house. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in with some of the dirt we gathered. I'm actually gonna fill in just a little bit around the house. Uh, for now, we may end up taking some of these blocks out of here a little later. I like having a path around the house uh, that we can walk on if we choose to. Now we come in here, we can take our cooked mutton. Let's go ahead and cook our raw chicken as well. And we'll actually use our wooden pickaxe for that. Since we have a stone pickaxe, we don't really need the wooden pickaxe anymore. And that will actually cook one thing for us. That'll cook this, this raw chicken for us. Uh, so we can do that. We're going to eat one of our cooked mutton, and you'll see that'll mostly refill our health, but not entirely. Uh, and so that's something we're, we're going to have to watch for, is we want to make sure we get that. Now, once that wheat grows in, we'll be able to plant a whole lot more of it and do quite well. But until then, we have to be a little bit more careful. Now, I think that that's where we're going to end this first episode. We have a basic structure. Uh, we have uh, a simple farm going, and we found some caves that look like they might give us the dirt that we need, or the, the iron that we need in order to dig a little. This is a very interesting uh, world. We have lots of different biomes. We're at sort of this nexus of all of these different biomes, which means we have some really cool stuff we can do. I mean, look at, look at some of these hills and mountain structures that are uh, occurring over in these other biomes. It looks like we have a taiga biome there in the distance, uh, some savanna with, uh, with some hills in it, the desert, desert hills and mountains. Uh, this is an exciting world. I'm very excited for the series and where we end up with it. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Hopefully you've had a good time. Hopefully you're looking forward to the next episode, and we will see you then.